Again, thank you for joining us today for this final day of the 2018 AgriBility Virtual National Training Workshop. Our first session today is on the VA Accelerator Program and how that can be a benefit, benefit to uh, veterans that are interested in agriculture. We have uh, actually three presenters today. Uh, Desma Brooks is a farmer veteran, and Philip Sella is uh, from the VA Accelerator Program, and also Sydney Chastain from the National Agribility Project. Our veteran outreach coordinator will be uh, giving a few comments also. My name is Paul Jones, for those who don't know me. I'm the manager of the National Agribility Project at Purdue University. Before we start with the presentation, a few instructions for those who have not participated before. You have uh, an option of either computer or phone audio, and you can uh, make any adjustments to that through the communicate menu on the top left of your screen. Uh, if you need closed captioning, you can go to the multimedia viewer on the right side of your screen, the right column there. Click on that arrow to expand if it's not expanded already. And uh, if you cannot yet see the captions, you may have to enter a little bit of login information, but those should be available to you. You can expand or contract any of the uh, choices on your right-hand column, including the chat. Um, you can also expand or contract the entire right-hand column to maximize the size of the presentation. If you would like to do that, all you have to do is click and drag on the border between the presentation and the right-hand column. If you have questions of our presenters, uh, you have two options. You can enter questions into the chat window. Uh, simply expand that, enter your message. Please select send to all panelists. That's the best choice. And then make sure you hit the submit button. Also, if you would like to ask a question verbally during the question and answer period, uh, you can use the raise hand icon and we will do our best to activate your phone or your uh, web microphone so that you can ask your question verbally. We do have four quick survey questions at the end, and then we have a, a final poll after everything is concluded that you can share any other comments that you would like to uh, make. I will note that you will not be able to see all of the participants. Uh, we have minimized that so that you probably will only see your own name that uh, eliminates some of the bandwidth issues that we have run into in the past. So don't be concerned that you're the only person on the, the webinar. Um, if you have multiple people viewing at your, per, at your particular computer, if you could also let us know that in the chat window, it helps to uh, let us make a more accurate estimate of, a, estimate of attendance. We are recording the session. We are going to archive on the AgriBility website, and that will be under the online training link. Simply look for the virtual national training link after you get to online training, and then uh, hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have everything up from this web conference, including the uh, video recordings and the PowerPoints. If you have any technical problems, uh, please uh, use the chat window if you can. If for some reason you're not able to do that, you can email me, jonesp at purdue.edu, which is also the email address from which you got your instructions for logging in. For those who may not know much about AgriBility, our program is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the National, Food of, uh, National Institute of Food and Agriculture. And we work uh, to assist farmers or other people in agriculture that might have some type of disability or functional limitation. Every one of the AgriBility projects around the country is a partnership between a land-grant university and at least one nonprofit disability services organization. There are currently 20 of those uh, projects around the country, plus one national AgriBility project, which again is led here at Purdue University by the Breaking New Ground Resource Center. Our partners on the National AgriBility Project include uh, Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, April, which is the Association of Programs for Rural Independent Living, Colorado State University, and Washington State University. 
please feel free to find out more about AgriAbility at agribility.org. Uh, you can uh, find out if your state has a, an AgriAbility project, get contact information, view more than 50 archived webinars that we've done in the past, and find a lot of other resources, including a special page dedicated to farmer veterans. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to Cindy Chastain, our Veteran Outreach Coordinator here at the National AgriAbility Project. She's going to give a little introduction, and then we'll move on through the rest of our presentation. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, I'm Cindy Chastain, the Veteran Outreach Coordinator for the National AgriAbility Program. And we're really happy today to bring you a presentation on the VA's Accelerator um, program and we're also a veteran farmer that has used this uh, program to start their business. I'm sure many of you have heard stories uh, from veterans about the vocational rehabilitation in the VA program, not, not seeing agriculture maybe as a viable business for a disabled veteran. Um, we're happy to know that this program exists, the Accelerator program, and it will help a farmer. Um, so you'll hear more about that today from Philip Sella, the program manager of the, of the VA Accelerator program. Um, I encourage you to talk to your veterans about this program and see if they're eligible. The, the requirement is they have to be Chapter 31 eligible. And if you don't know what that is, I'll just give you a little bit. And you can also look on the uh, va.gov website and find out what those, those requirements are. But the, uh, the veteran has 12 years of eligibility after separation from the service or um, whenever their service disability was, was, um, dis was determined, <clears throat> they have 12 years. They have to have a 20% or more disability uh, service-related disability and other than dishonorable uh, discharge from the service and some need of rehab services and <clears throat> something that they call an employment handicap. So those will have to be determined by a case manager at the VA, but those are the minimum requirements to be Chapter 31 eligible. Um, so I think Philip will probably talk a little bit more about that today. Um, please take a look at, uh, if you want to show your, your veterans or the veterans that are online now today, uh, please take a look at our resources on our website, um, the NAP website. We have a lot of resources for veterans there. We also have our video, the next mission .us. Um, So if you want to take a look at that, we, we will also add this presentation on our veterans uh, tab on our website when we're complete. So please ask questions, give, give me a call if you have any questions about the presentation and I can get you hooked up with people that can help you. And with that, we will start with Desma Brooks. She's a veteran farmer from, uh, from Indiana and a good friend of mine and I will let her tell you her story about using the Accelerator program. Good morning. Hello, I am Desma Brooks, and this is how I, as a veteran, successfully started my farm with the VA's help. Like I said, I'm Desma Brooks. I am a veteran who happens to be disabled, and I started a farm. There's my logo, Third Times a Farm. I enlisted in 96, and I retired in 2014 medically. I have an 80% disability rating, which allowed me to use vocational rehab um, benefits. Um, and I'm also a member of Homegrown by Heroes and Indiana Grown. It's a labeling uh, marketing aspect that gives us an advantage in markets and, and uh, branding. All right, how did I find out about vocational rehab uh, and uh, benefits? Uh, VA.gov, you can find all your benefits there. It is kind of a maze, so uh, take your time, use the uh, drop downs, and, and read as much as possible. It is very droll and very, very um, meticulous, but you can find anything that you could qualify for right there. Um, I have a case manager through uh, Vocational Rehab Services. Uh, you have to be nice to your case manager. Um, you are at their mercy. <clears throat> um, I attended a program called Operation Groundwork. It was run by an Air Force veteran. 
here in Indiana. Um, it was a week-long program, and we found out about the Farmer Veteran Coalition, and um, there was mention of that you could use your vocational rehab benefits. And uh, there was a flyer for the VA Accelerator Program. Uh, the veteran putting on the pro operation groundwork, she had actually signed up for it, but um, farm and life got in the way. She never really completed it. Uh, so I went to, um, I applied for vocational rehab, and I went to my case manager, and I said, I want to be a farmer. And he said, you have an 80% disability. And I said, I'm going to be a farmer. So um, I told him I needed to figure out how to build a business plan. I wanted it to actually be a viable business, so I needed a logo. I needed to figure out how to market. I needed help um, figuring out a long-term budget and how all that works and how it applies to agriculture. Um, my vocational rehab, this is where the word of mouth comes in, my vocational rehab um, counselor had no idea what I was talking about when I said I, there was a program. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have his regional manager in the building at that time. And she said, I remember having an email. So she forwarded the email to, Ju to Justin. He's my, my uh, case manager. And Justin enrolled me in the program. And this is where we're, we found out how this works. So the VA Accelerator Program um, is to help you start, grow, start and grow a business. It doesn't really matter what your small business is. There was another veteran who uh, wrangles wild animals out of your garage or your attic. Um, he has a great website. I don't remember what that is, but that was my, that was my go-to. Um, there is an entire team behind you to do this project. Uh, Philip was my team leader, my team manager, and he has a, a great group of people behind him who helped me work out a marketing plan, a, um, how to figure out what I needed to do to pinpoint my branding, um, uh, my business plan, what, you know, exactly how, how does my business plan work with the slide decks. Um, anytime I needed any questions, I answered, I could email the team and someone would get back to me and most of it boiled down to, I'm thinking too hard, it's a puzzle. It took me an entire year to finish the program. It's a lot of PowerPoint. Um, and I also have children at home and trying to run a farm and a bit of a cognitive disconnect. Um, so it was a little a, a little challenging for me. If you're good at the online online training and, and being self-motivated and problem solving on your own, then it may take you a lot less time. Um, what issues did I run into? Uh, there's a lot of PowerPoint, and we all know how that can be uh, sometimes frustrating. Um, I asked myself, did I really want to be a business owner when it was all when you put all of it together and it, you know you're looking at your financials and your your what type of business do you want? Do you, are you going to be an LLC? Are you going to be incorporated? Are you going to have a board? Do you really want to go nonprofit? You know, do I really want to be a business owner? And how does farming relate to financials? And how do I look at a five-year plan when I want to do just a CSA or a farmer's market? Um, there are different levels of business. Um, uh, Philip can get into that, what we can do and what we can't do. Um, each piece of the puzzle, that each assignment that you do through this, through this uh, program it's a piece of the puzzle. When you get it all together, it will become a business plan. Um, I didn't see it at first, but it, it really fell together very, very nicely in the end. And when I come out of it, um, I have a five-year business plan with financial project projections. Um, in just the first two years, it has actually changed quite a lot. Um, but it's it's still I know how to I know how to put it together now. A marketing plan. I had um, professionally designed flyers and brochures. They were all my text and all my pictures. More of those puzzle pieces coming together. I have a website, Third Times a Farm. 
Um, the team actually has a um, web designer, and she helped pick the layout and help me to um, to formulate it all together. These are my pages. This is where I want my. There's a lot to that. How you want your 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 landing page to hit, and and what are your keywords to bring people back to this particular area of your website. It, it really is quite amazing how it all falls together. Um, through vocational rehab, I was able to, with this program, I was able to get funded um, a six-row seater, a four-row hand seater, um, a vacuum seater with all the plates, bed prep rake, um, there was some other stuff, and then we still have pending a BCS walking tractor with a tiller and a rotary plow. This is because of funding constraints. Um, the whole business plan can be sent to Washington and funded as a whole. Um, the office that I work with is trying to keep everything into a credit card limit um, uh, boundary. So we're still working on that. Um, and I got the Chapter 31 stipend while I was completing the course, which allowed for me to um, take care of printing those brochures and flyers and the um, uh, the fees for my website and uh, just just getting the farm off the ground. Pros and cons, there you see it. I, it was great to have a business plan. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing for the extra uh, hand equipment. Um, the the stipend to cover the website was great, and but uh, cons for me the hardest part was the PowerPoint. There's a lot of videos involved in it too, which you know you do have the ability to listen to those over and over, which is great. Um, I, I'm really thankful that I was able to come across this with this uh, program and and have a living document that I can take later on to. Uh, a lender if I needed to, or um, uh, whatever you all do, we, we do with our business plan. Um, uh, where, am I am now, where am I at now? Um, last year we, had, we sold to restaurants and we sold to farmers markets, in farmers markets, and we had a CSA. Um, this year we uh, are stepping away from farmers markets as there's a lot it's very labor intensive um with everything else we're uh sticking with our CSA expanding and um moving on with uh we have a two VFWs we're providing uh produce for this year and we're hoping to expand that a lot more and i think that's it for me Thank you very much, Desma, for sharing that information. Very, very useful, I think, um, to to a lot of our uh, staff and clients who have maybe not been sure about how to access programs like this through the VA. So at this point, I'm going to uh, pass the ball over to Philip Sella, and he should be able to give us some more details about the Accelerator program. So, Philip, I've passed the ball. You just need to unmute and activate your camera, and I think we should be good to go. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody, for the uh, for, for your patience, and uh, also uh, thanks, Paul, for uh, helping pull all this technical stuff out. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, the VA Accelerator Program, but first I want to say that Desma was um, fantastic to work with. And what a uh, what a pleasure to uh, to be able to work with her. And I actually visited her in Indiana and saw what she was doing. The um, the the goal of the the, v, the history of the VA accelerator program is it's it's really one of a kind because this program was stood up by an innovation uh, from VA from VRNE in particular back in 2011. So it's, we've been around a while, um, and we have uh, hundreds of success stories from Maine to the Philippines, and Desma's, Desma's one of them. <clears throat> the innovation started out because VA really wanted its own um, entrepreneurship program. So what we developed is, as Desma talked about, is really kind of a hub and spoke. The hub is 
is our, our ability to uh, educate the individual veteran on whatever type of business they're in, and in Desmo's um, particular situation, being a farm. But the spoke is, is really reaching out to the local VRE and local resources to help Desmo put together that plan that where business is local and to tap into the local markets for what she's growing and how she's going to uh, to service that uh, that customer uh, local to her. So that's one of the unique things about us. And you can learn. Desma had a website. You uh, you know the the you can you can uh, link and you can go there and learn a little bit more about us. But one of the things is is that the you know, um, that in, in particular you ought to understand is is that we were stood up by VRNE uh, for for the disabled veteran, in particular the Chapter 31 community. In particular, there is a uh, regulation, the VRNE M28R, in which we support, and we're actually written into that regulation as a resource uh, for for the disabled veteran. So. So one of the things to think about is, is that there, there are um, some case managers when we were rolling this out that may have thought that entrepreneurship wasn't right for you know, veterans and, and so, or the case managers have changed. But one of the things that you can always point them back to is, is that we're right in the policy of VA, in particular VA, VRNE and then 20 r the v, the uh, the VA accelerator program is also a nonprofit. Um, as part of the innovation, we set up a nonprofit to be able to help the the disabled veteran community, <clears throat> and we're a designated uh, facility code for for VA. So, as being a designated facility, the veterans who qualify, the Chapter 31s who qualify for a stipend, they actually get compensated while they're going through the education. And this often can help uh, them apply um, some of that compensation to other, some of the other things uh, with their farm, as well as helping them out with their life as they're as they're going through the program. As Desma has talked about, is we have a series of curriculums, but we focus everything on the Ready Set Grow strategy, um, which is uh, a common strategy out of Harvard. Is um, Ready is 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 are you ready to be an entrepreneur? Set is really putting together the plan and and uh, the resources to really get your business uh, started up and going. And the grow is how do you grow your business? How do you take what you applied in the plan, in particular in the marketing and sales parts of your plan, and how do you really? Uh, Take that and, 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 and exploit that to be able to service your customers and get your name out. Because one of the things in, in growing your business is you, you got to get known. And that's one thing that Desma was really great about is she was not shy on knocking on doors and getting known. And she just needed the tools behind her, the website, the brochures, and, and some themes and strategies to really help her. And uh, with uh, with when she knocks on the door, how to uh, transact with that business. And the plan piece, which is important before you grow, is we take the the veterans through all facets of understanding what type of business it is that you want to do. We apply everything in the education specifically to their business. And then when it comes to the, the the so so what is the what is the opportunity? Who are who are your customers? Uh, how many customers can you identify and quantify the customers? How do you structure your business? How do you um, uh, market? And what are your goods and services going to be? How do you market uh, and sell to that customer that you've identified? How do you then? How do you develop? Uh, you know, really a viable, sustainable business. And how do you build that business model into your financials? So one of the things we do in the financials in particular is, is we, we not only develop a financial model, but we develop a tool that Desma can then change into real, real numbers as she's growing the business and use that tool to be now provide forecasting and, and, and look at the accurate forecasting so she can understand her picture 
years in advance on how she's doing, on what crop she's doing, on who she's selling to, what are the price points. All those things are built into this financial model that she can work with and utilize a tool for, for years beyond. Because one of the things that we want to also do is we don't want the veteran in this program in particular, we don't want to, the veteran to disappear after they start the business. We've stayed in touch with Desma because we want to stay in touch with all of our veterans and we want to help them be successful because their goal, Desma's goal of success is our goal of success. We rate ourselves as success. We're also, one of the unique things about our program, we're disabled veterans too. So a lot of us have high percentage disabilities, but we also have a lot of business expertise in the outside. And we now apply that expertise to help farmers like Desma become successful and understand the facets of business so she can then work on her new journey of farming and, and be successful for years to come. And then I think I talked a little bit about the capture. So the capture, what we do is if you look at the business plan where you take the marketing and sales section, what we do is we turn that into reality. We, we look at how can we expand that to something applicable so, so you have all the tools you need to get out there and get going. The, um, the other piece of it is, is that, you know, the way we do this is really uh, in a modality of education. So, so uh, the, the main site is the Center for Business Acceleration. So that's, uh, again, uh, the VA Accelerator Program is underneath that. And, and that is a, a, a nonprofit. And the nonprofit actually is about giving. And, and about giving, uh, what we focus on is your first stop on the journey is, is being your best. So what we work with is, is its charter is really to help disabled veterans in their journey, and in particular in, in, in the journey of business. And we uh, operate like an education institution. We take you through the, the, the education building blocks to be able to understand what a business is about. And then the next step is as we apply that as you're going through the um, the education and, and and it works as as as, as however you want. And, an example with Desma is Desma said, "Hey, every Tuesday and Thursday, I'd like to be on a call with you at 10 a.m." So every Tuesday and Thursday, I was talking to Desma. She would work on the fields a little bit, no matter what what how 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 hot or how cold it was. And Desma could tell you about that is that we would talk, she'd come off the fields, and we would talk every Tuesday and Thursday about our business. And it, it did take her a while, but she, but she has the confidence to really make this business go uh, for uh, as, long as, uh, as long as she wants to, to, to farm. And so that's one of the things that we also focus on in, in, in the education is we don't set a starting point and an ending point other than getting your business up and going. How the veteran works through that, through uh, how they work with the timing, we're there to, to adjust our timing to them. We're there to focus on their business, their business goals, and, uh, and, and, and everything is wrapped around what they're doing and their success. We do run it like an education institution from sheer fact as a, as a, as a VA education facility we need to track certain things, but all those things roll up into their student record that both the um, that VA can monitor as well as they monitor, and 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 that helps them also understand where they're at and uh, and and where they need to be. But that's um, that's the main part about um, the VA Accelerator Program. I'm sure there's lots of questions. But one of the things one of the things to leave with is uh, that, that you need to think about is is that this program it was stood up by VA for disabled veterans only one of its kind. The other piece of it is is that we're in the policy. So if 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 a case manager says I don't know about it or I don't know how to do it, it's all explained in their policy. On how to get involved and how they how the how the veteran can get engaged in this program. So we're happy to help lots more farmers, 
and we're excited to um, uh, to be here and, and talk about this program. Well, thank you very much, Philip, for that information. And now I'm going to turn things over to Sean Ehlers, who's our this is our, our technology uh, information technology specialist today. He's going to be displaying the questions that have been submitted. And again, feel free to continue to ask questions as we go along or raise your hand. And we will have either uh, Philip or Desma, possibly Cindy, respond to these questions as appropriate. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect now. Yes, yes, it is. So, so yes, the answer is yes. As part of um, uh, part of the uh, VA Accelerator program, as we work through the plan, we identify um, items that are aligned with the plan to be able to uh, assist the, the uh, veteran farmer in in uh, tools and and or equipment, and it's based on. There's a little bit of technical because it's based on uh, category one versus category two, but but there is um, items that uh, can be provided, and uh, to be able to assist the veteran in uh, helping them overcome some physical disabilities with working on the farm. Another one for you, Philip. Okay, so um, uh, so so the. Um, we don't have uh, direct a lot of direct farm experience, uh, other than uh, I, I do have a little bit. My family, um, it's more ranching than farming. My family owned a, a ranch in Texas for about 110 years. I worked on the ranch a lot um, in my life, and uh, also I worked on farms, and, uh, and we had a farm on the ranch in Texas. Um, however, we don't have any uh, experience as of uh, the way that, that, that Desma has. The, Desma has much more experience of farming than we do. But we do um, uh, connect with other farmers, um, and, and so they can gain that experience. Um, however, the business fundamentals uh, of uh, the agricultural business is a business. And fundamentals of whatever you try to do have to apply to the same business principles. And just agriculture is, is a little bit variance because you're growing things or ranching your well, growing things too, cattle. And, and so you need to uh, apply that um, to that. Um, but what we, we uh, really try to do is, is get um, the veterans connected with local resources, farming resources that can help them really understand what the farming means in their local community. Uh, Paul, is this one also for me? Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, yes, um, we, we, we're a program that's been around for you know over five years and, and very successful with VA. Uh, we don't see any um, any challenges uh, with the, the program um, uh, not existing down the future. And we are, again, we are part of VA's policy out there. and We're helping veterans uh, all across the country. I'm on it. Okay. Um, did they help me get my high tunnel? No. I used um, USDA's uh, Natural Resources Conservation uh, NRCS program uh, to uh, fund the high tunnel. That program is offered to the USDA. You can go to your regional office and talk to them about that program. Um, what I had to do there was put the high tunnel up, and they reimbursed me a portion of what I spent to put it up. It's, it's part of the EQIP program, that's right. Um, it was, it's a great program. I put it up in October. They refunded in February, I believe, February, March. Um, and then I was, I'm under contract um, until the end of the month this month, and then I can reapply for another one. Oh, why is it so important to me? 
nice to my case manager. You know, I had we as veterans who qualify for uh, the vocational rehab services, um, we need to realize that we're not the only one. There are hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of us who, who have a disability who can qualify. Our case managers are few and far between in regional offices. Um, and they they really they really have a caseload like like any other VA uh, employee, um, and, and I found with with the case managers, whether it be at the hospital or, or at the regional office, that if I am kind to them, then they will remember me as someone who will work with them. I follow up with them. I I send friendly reminders. Hey, Justin, have we heard anything? And he's like, you know. It kind of fell off my radar. I totally get that. Um, I was a government employee at one time too with my plate full. Um, there, there's a lot going on in the VA centers, and and we we are sometimes faulty people as disabled veterans trying to find a pathway and and a new purpose. So therefore, um, it, it really is a matter of you get you get more with sugar than you do vinegar. Um, and, and if you're kind to these people, they will work harder for you. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so um, for chapter chapter thirty one services, as um, Cindy mentioned, there is a, a disability rating. Um, when so, and, and two parts. Um, uh, well, the disability rating is, is 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 there. So, at the start of usually um, when the veterans in, enter the program is is. Um, uh, after after that rating has been identified, and and they also have a 12 year window to be able to do that. So, in our situation, is um, we we've, uh, we're working with um, veterans of of really all ages and eras. And eras, I mean the Vietnam era veterans to to Iraq Afghanistan era veterans. Uh, and even some veterans that are and uh, were part of um, uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. So, but it, because it also because it started when um, they they um, uh, received their rating of thirty percent or greater. So a couple of questions that we'd like to uh, ask verbally. So here's one that says. What are the limits to equipment funding? Okay, so so that's a that, that's a great question, uh, and I think I think that somebody has. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I I would say I'm not the best expert, but I can I can share with you our experience. Okay, in this and in, in doing this for about the last five years. So, so there, there certainly is uh, category one and category two uh, that we talked about, and that is that that identifies um, tools, tools, um, and or equipment. But equipment, um, so there are some limitations to equipment, and 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 our experience has been that um, things that kind of are are are. are um, uh, for, uh, tractors, uh, trucks, vehicles, those the things that they declare as a vehicle, a tractor sometimes may or may not be, but things they, they look at as a, as, as a more of a, a transportation type of thing, those aren't funded. The other thing is, is that um, so the locally, our experience is locally, they can fund regionally. There's 57 regions. How, how it's kind of broken up. I know I'm kind of zipping around, but there's 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 lots of pieces of this puzzle. The central office, which is in Washington D.C., but underneath of that, there's 57 VA regions, and 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 Desmos in the Indiana region. Locally, they can they can support um, purchases up to around uh, with a proof plan up to around twenty five thousand dollars of 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 items, and 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 the, what Desma talked about is doing the local purchase type of things. You know, the credit card, their impact card, the local purchase. 
uh, because if it goes to central office, then then you know it, it makes it a little more difficult because you don't have a a a, a an advocate like Desma had an advocate being her case manager in the region behind her. When it goes outside the region, you lose that advocacy. So so the so it's typically uh, twenty five thousand dollars, but it's also aligned with what you need to do. So. So one of the things, uh, one of the, one of the things that, that that people veterans often read about is, is um, I you know is you know hundreds of thousands. We've heard stories of hundred thousand dollars. We've heard stories of lots of different things. But but it really focuses on um, they have they have a policy. It's government policy on what they can purchase and what they can't purchase. It's not the case manager decision. It's, it's there's government policy on what they can purchase and what they can't purchase. And there are limits to what they can purchase and can't purchase. And and they and um and, and it also has to be aligned with their business. So what do you really need essentially to start up your business? And that's the thing you have to start start about. We've had businesses that have start up with as as little as ten or set actually anywhere from two to seven to ten to twelve to fourteen thousand dollars worth of equipment and be successful because the objective is to to give you a provide you a starter kit to being able to then apply your profits to be able to um, buy additional equipment. The other thing is if you need um, items uh, that are beyond what they can provide is that they're going to look for uh, VA is going to look for how would you uh, do you have cash? Or how would you secure a loan to be able to provide those things? Because the goal is for VA, just like us, is for you to have a successful business, and um, and VA is granting you the the items to be able to apply to a uh, successful business. Okay, thank you, Philip. Uh, a couple other comments and questions that were in the. Uh Chat window. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm a veteran and a service provider. Just wondering if this specific this is specific for those wanting to get into farming or any business. And I believe you've answered that to be it's any business and not just farming. Another question here. Let's see. I need to adjust something here. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, another one. Um, we are a veteran service provider connecting veterans with ag resources. At the beginning, it was stated that VA doesn't always see agriculture as a viable option. <clears throat> How should we best change this? Would it be beneficial to meet with VA? And if so, who? And then to follow up with my question, do we meet with them to let them know we have resources to help with their work? So that looks like another one for Philip, if you have any comments on that. Um, uh, um, I would I, I would suggest the approach to uh, depending upon your organization whether you're a local or national organization. But VRE is broken out into 57, 57 re regions, um, so they and they and they run you know a little bit autonomous. So you you the best approach may be to meet up with each one of the regional managers uh, of the regions that you support and talk to them about um, wh how you can help um, veterans uh, who are interested in in farming. Okay, thank you. Uh Let's see, another question that came up. Um, 
is there a non-veteran version of this for non-VA voc rehab? And my interpretation of that is that um, is there a, a general uh, type of business planning program for state vocational rehabilitation? And if, uh, if, if I'm interpreting that incorrectly, uh, please let me know. But I, just from my experience working with Agribility, I know that some states do have small business self-employment as part of their vocational rehabilitation state voc, vo, state voc rehab systems. Now, <clears throat> I'm not positive that that's in every state, but I know in Indiana we've used that fairly extensively. So my recommendation would be to check with your state VR to see if they have that uh, small business enterprise program. And if anybody has other comments, please feel free to make those on that. So again, we want to thank everyone for participating today, also for our uh, presenters, uh, Philip and Desma and Cindy. Uh, for those that are able to join us this afternoon, again, we'll be uh, doing our final webinar on uh, accessible beekeeping technology. That's at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And um, before I forget, I will be opening that final uh, chat, or excuse me, that final uh, poll to get in any other further comments you'd like to, to make. So um, we appreciate you attending today and uh, we wish you a good rest of the day.